Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nancy Ward in Community Engagement, How Do I Get My Community Support 101. Good afternoon. If I said this historic tagline, if you build it, will they come? What pertinence do you think that has to our conversation this afternoon? <coughs> We've heard a lot of technical information, great information, about you who will be planning to build. But what's going to be a key to making that work for your community? Don't be shy. You got to sign up. You got to have users, right? So um, that's why we, we thought it would be good to share with you about how you engage your community in knowing what's going on, um, how they can be uh, beneficial users of your broadband network as it comes in. So basically, community engagement is all about building community support and utilization. So today I want to share some perspectives with you about what is community engagement, why is it important to you, how do you do it, and what are some success factors. Um, so we're going to just chat just a few minutes and then I'm going to turn it over to the real practitioner, Judge Ward and, and Gail Wright, who are the real practitioners of community engagement. So let's talk about community engagement. Basically, it's the involvement of, of members of your community across all your user sectors. So can you all name some of the user sectors that we might be interested in? Is broadband only going to, to impact one user type of users? No. Why don't you name a couple? Can you name a couple? Yeah. Education. What others? So what? Medical, hospitals, right. What else? Public safety. What else? Agriculture, absolutely. Uh, is there a tourism person in the room? Tourism. What about government, government services? Will that impact? Okay, so there's a lot of user sectors associated with gaining benefits for your community associated with broadband infrastructure. So basically, when we talk about community engagement, we're talking about getting those folks involved with it. Um, and to include with that involvement, that it includes educating them and informing them about what's going on and, in core, and getting feedback from them and incorporating that feedback into your community decisions. You know, it can't be just risk on one person's table. There's got to be a shared risk and shared um, support for broadband infrastructure. We're talking about an infrastructure like Joe referenced earlier this morning, a utility for your community. So what do you think community outcomes should be as a result of this engagement? Support for broadband. If your community is going to be putting bucks in the ball game, don't you think that you have to, you'll have to have some support, especially if you're a community uh, official? And ultimately, the outcome that you want on this engagement is that they're aware of what's going on they understand the benefits, and they adopt it for meaningful use. So basically, it's a process for you to inform, educate, and gain input from folks with the overall outcome of having them use it and adopting it for meaningful utilization. So why is it important? Well, it's important because they need to know what's going on. Folks in your community, we have an expression, we're going to do this change with you, not to you. So you're involving the, the folks in your community, across all those many user sectors in helping understand and being informed about broadband and what it can do for the community and to build that community-wide support. Basically, if you're an elected official, you need to be responsive to your constituents. So you really need that feedback so you can represent the interests um, and perspectives of your cons constituents. And basically, um, you want to encourage advancing all the user benefits associated with broadband for achieving the quality of life benefits associated with broadband. And really, overall, you want to achieve community-wide access and adoption by your community folks. It's not an individual thing. This is applicable to businesses, organizations, uh, and other entities as well as individuals. So I'm not going to belabor this. These are just some models about engagement, but basically, the models that, that people have followed relate to activities and interactions re related to 
um, educating and informing community folks, um, consult with them, um, involve them, collaborate, get their perspectives on things, and then empower them to use the result of what has been decided by the community leadership. So what are some success factors for community engagement? Well, obviously leadership is, is important throughout the broadband implementation as well as community engagement. You have to have some cheerleaders and sponsorship. It just doesn't lie on one person. It's got to be a community-wide leadership and ownership of that decision of what the community is going to be doing about that last mile. You have to have, as earlier we've heard, one size does not fit all. So you really need to have a customized approach to what engagement will work for your environment, what will work for your community. Every community has got their own nuances and uniqueness. So you really need to customize those engagement activities to fit the culture and the environment of your community. And engagement is not a one-time event. You just can't do it, say, I'm done with engagement. It's a sustainable effort that has to go through every stage of broadband to include its actual implementation, management, and um, um, existence. And we just can't do this, talk about engagement. Yes, that's a happy place to be. You have to have a coordination, pl coordinated plan and somebody in charge to making sure engagement happens at the right time. Now, engagement activities will change over time depending on where, where you are in that broadband implementation and management, so it will change over time. But basically, you really need to have some kind of leadership in charge of involving the community, getting their feedback, and also promoting the adoption and utilization of that broadband infrastructure. So basically, to wrap my discussion up, engagement is important, community engagement is important, it's a process, and basically, it's a process devoted to outcomes of um, adoption, and community-wide access and adoption, increased broadband consumerism, as well as using broadband for advancing the benefits, the many benefits associated with uh, high-speed internet for your community. So I'm gonna let uh, Gail, you wanna go next about, we've got two practitioners up there, and so, Judge Ward and Gail. So I'm gonna let them talk a little bit about what they've done in terms of how they've applied these concepts to their community. Okay, thanks Nancy. Uh, while Nancy's making her way back up to the table, I'm gonna give you just a little bit of background uh, about how we got started in the broadband planning effort. Um, my region is a small region, it's one of the smallest in the state. Um, there's 15 area development districts and I cover five counties and there's only about 88,000 uh, 88, uh, population in my region. So that gives you some perspective about how small we are. And that is one reason why we felt like we could plan as a region rather than a county. Um, when we heard about the state uh, looking at helping with planning regions and to try to do broadband planning, we decided to apply for that. And we were successful in getting that. And um, then that was that really uh, made all of our region happy. Um, and Celerity was hired on behalf of our region. And Nancy came and wor worked with us and Corey and Sue and helped us get started on planning. Um, it was a, an interesting process. And um, we had to try to think about all the people that should be involved. Um, you look at your community leaders, and if you think about by county, who would you invite to a process like this? You think about the people who are the busiest, the leaders in the community and the movers and shakers in the community, and when you're looking at small communities, you're thinking about the same people who are asked to do everything. So you have to think about when you would do planning, when you have them come to a meeting, when's the best time to do that and how can you get them there? First off, you have to feed them. <laughs> and either breakfast or lunch to try to get them there. Um, and then you have to keep your meetings pretty short because they're busy and they, you know, they wanna get it done and move on to what else they're trying to do. So we tried to honor that. Um, and we had a lot of really good participation and it moved very fast. Um, I think, Nancy, we got done in, what, about six months? Uh, Something like five, that, or, or less? Five. Yes. 
and that's pretty fast <coughs> for a planning effort. Some of the things that we learned in this process was um, that you do have to take it out to the people. You, have to, you can't just have it at your office. You have to go out into your counties, and you can't just go in your incorporated cities. You have to make sure you include people from out in the region. Uh, and interesting enough, Alan, you'll be interested in this. When we went to Menifee County to hold uh, uh, one of our sessions and we asked them about broadband, they didn't know they had broadband. And I thought that, I found that to be very interesting. So I think it was, a, and you know, they're one of the mountain telephone counties along with Morgan. We're lucky enough to have Morgan and Menifee in our region and they are uh, mountain telephone uh, counties and have broadband. So, and they have excellent broadband. But I think that's an education process is what that is. So we found that we need to do some kind of uh, education process, marketing effort or something like that in our, uh, when, when we do our follow-up. Um, so I think that it varies by county, what we, how we have to handle each of these things. Um, and I think that um, each of our communities, you have to find somebody who is very passionate about it, and sometimes more than one person. Uh, the elected officials can try to um, participate in a project and try to lead the effort, but if they don't have the support of some passionate people, it's going to be hard for them to pull it off. You're absolutely correct on, on the passionate people. Uh, as CNX had done our stu uh, the regional study for us, uh, we started looking at what we needed to do. Uh, I started looking at, at where the closest dark fiber was, uh, where the, the, the closest fiber was, and, and the capability of the fiber that was close to us. So, uh, as we've done that, and, and uh, we had talked to, uh, uh, matter of fact, Daryl Maynard had come over and talked to me about how we might be able to do this. So our first option was to, uh, to do a board. Uh, now, as county judge, most boards I have to beg people to be on. Uh, this board, as soon as it come out in the paper the next day that I was creating a board, uh, the phone started ringing. People want to be on this board. Uh, that's the type of people that you have to have on boards uh, to, to make them work. Uh, we end up with a, a, uh, our chairman, uh, which is a, a preacher, a school teacher, uh, a tech guy for the school system, a little bit of everything. Uh, we ended up with a, a software technician uh, or analyst, we ended up with a, a, a service engineer for the broadband that, that puts these systems together. So we, we ended up well-rounded. Uh, we ended up with a, a, a fellow that does media, and the reason he won there because, believe it or not, the economics is why we we're doing this. Uh, he has a, a, a local media company, and he ended up, having to get on his phone, uh, on his Appalachian Wireless phone, matter of fact, to upload, to upload his uh, product to the company out in Colorado. Uh, so, you know, he could not get it through the fiber, uh, and, you know, he, he was looking at, at, and I seen it there this morning, 10, 12 hours to get, to get that upload. Now, download is real important for the ones of us that want to uh, watch a movie, do something of that nature. But when you have kids, and, and it's a lot of it's in education. Uh, if your package that you have is, you don't have a, a, enough package, the package you bought and you've got three kids and they've got a device on and you and your wife's got a device on, you, you're not you're not going to be satisfied with your service, uh, but we 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 had to look at that and and we made sure that we went out in the community and educated the people that we were wanting to to serve as broadband. 
Now, being one of the, the uh, coal, uh, coal counties that is almost non-producing coal county now, uh, we have to look at other economics. Now, one of the things that, that we looked at through people who come to me that had applied for jobs online uh, that got turned down, they got the job, but they couldn't, their, their upload speed wasn't enough for them to hold that job down. Uh, so that's when we, you know, we, we've got to put this board together. Uh, uh, in my opinion, one of the best boards I've ever had the experience of working with. Uh, but being able to let them go out and educate, because as far as me going out and educating the people on how all this stuff works, that's not me. I, I can put the board together. I've learned a lot myself. Uh, but, you know, we have to educate the people on, the, on what they expect, uh, what uh, they're going to get, and, and, and what the cost of it is. Uh, through all this process, uh, we had an area of our county that was unserved, was considered unserved. Uh, so we we ended up with a grant writer on our board too. So we wrote a grant. That's lucky. <laughs> yeah. So so you know we wrote a grant towards uh, the unserved. So uh, with that, uh, we have gained a lot of national recognition through our board. Uh, uh, believe we're not CNN's been up to. Uh, with us in uh, a paper from Japan, is that right, Harry? Uh, you know, several uh, got a lot of national attention by the way we were pushing forward and doing this. And if nothing else, if this board don't do anything else, the company that, the, the cable company down there that for those people was unserved or, or underserved, is now got fiber in. So we did push that. What we're looking for is reliable uh, and, and, and cost efficient to the average person. Uh, and we have talked to some of the local providers uh, about doing some partnerships uh, to see what is going to be our best options. Uh, when we got to looking, uh, you know, we already had a lot of broadband in our county that, that just people weren't really aware of. But through that, uh, I think they have spread on out too. So uh, we, there, there is dark fiber very close to us. Uh, we have about four different companies that we could uh, buy off of. And, and that's something I think the private companies need to look at with the local governments or, uh, is we can buy that cheaper than you all can. Now, we would kind of be the middleman and sell back to you, but we're able, uh, our board has discussed this, uh, and if that could let the private companies lower their rates by, by us being a, a government entity and, and, and buy, buying the bandwidth for them is a possibility. Uh, we're, we, you know, we're still open, uh, our board is still open to all aspects of what we need to do, but we are uh, following forward with uh, the place that is unserved, uh, and we are looking at a mixture of wireless to the fiber uh, because of our terrain. Uh, that is part of the problem in our area is our terrain. Uh, you can't go all wireless. Uh, so we're looking at wireless to, to where we have to go to the fiber to serve to the home. So if I, had to, if I asked you and Gail, Judge, what would you see the benefits of engaging your fiber board or your team, your leadership team? What would you say the benefits are or have been um, in trying to get that team together or those those folks together uh, the the, uh, the 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 benefit it, uh, one of the benefits is 
is the education that we have put out to the general public. Uh, educating on them, uh, or educating them what, if, if their package is not doing what they need to do, they need to upgrade. Uh, I think we have educated the, the, the private uh, companies that we're serious about doing something. Uh, and, you know, we are going to proceed as we are. Uh, and, but we would like the partnership too. Uh, because they, they already have a, a lot of, of, of the broadband in place. So, you know, we're, we're, we're still looking at all options, uh, but uh, that was a big section of our county on the lower end of our county that was just unserved. Uh, some, some of them were still on dial up, uh, uh, you know, some of them had nothing. So, uh, I think we might have been the county he was talking about that looked, that when he was talking about when CNX was talking about the different ways to look at it, some of them we're going toward the big populated areas. Well, we spotted a grant where we could go to the real rural areas that was unserved. I think that it's real important to make sure you get the right people on the board like that because they bring so many different ideas to the table. And, they, um, and then I love the P3 idea uh, because I think that is the future and I think that that's the way that we can get things funded. Um, and I think if we can use universities and the hospitals and that kind of thing and make sure they're included on the boards as well, I think that's really important. So involvement of all those cross uh, yes. uh, uh, stakeholder user sectors. Yes. Um, what I found interesting in working with some communities, it, it always came up that they wanted a high school student in there with us. You know, that that's sort of the future, you know, in a college age or a college student because that's the future, uh, future users of, of the broadband. So um, unfortunately, it was summer for a couple of clients, but I think that's really a good idea. It's just not all the old fogies like me trying to come up with what the needs are for broadband, but to include the youth in this to the extent that we can get them off their cell phones. <laughs> but um, I thought that was an interesting perspective um, that we emerged. And agriculture and tourism were very much promoted too in terms of um, active users and beneficiaries of broadband. And we're working on our governance structure right now and we want to include the youth on our governance structure. So we already have a question. Hey Judge, yes. you're talking about that lower end of Letcher County and if I'm not mistaken, what you're talking about is over there on the other side of the mountain Arley Boggs Elementary School? Uh, no, it's down at Campbell's Branch. Was it Campbell? But didn't didn't Arley Boggs, I mean, here we had an elementary school yeah. in Larcher County uh, that had to do, you know, we we and all the schools were trying, obviously, and, and that's yeah. that's something that, that you know, uh, in all East Kentucky counties that may have been behind, in some cases more advanced than others. But if I'm not mistaken, it, it's just been up until recent years, I mean, we had an right. elementary school over there. They, they were still doing dial-up. When I mean, right. dial-up's extinct. Yes. Am I right? That's that's right. So uh, uh, yeah. And, so that's and, a, uh, that was. Uh, now I probably shouldn't mention the name, but that was uh, Intermountain Cable, and I think they did get a grant and start. Is that not correct, Harry? And and upgraded their system uh, to get it up to there. Well, let me ask you a question on, on the P3s, Leslie. Yeah. Even though you, you know it's public-private partnerships, can we, could we, with the finances of a private company and a local government, still file for the P3s? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's something else too. That that uh, where we get off on a whole another half-hour P3 discussion here too, because I left a whole lot out. Okay. But see, that's, that's the other part. You still, in a P3, you still own, you still own the assets. You still, as, as a local government, yes, you can use local governments, okay, uh, at, at any level. But, but you don't have to give up any assets. You don't have to give up property. Gov the government property still belongs to you. If you, if you look at the way, and like I said, that's, I, in fact, I can leave something 
uh, with Hilda and with Lonnie and everybody, that, that, is a, that is a real nice overview and have sent out to everyone, okay? That, that kind of just goes through those, those particulars as to what all you can and can't do. So, but yes, you're correct. That answer, you yes. clear on that? Okay. So back to the panelists, what were your barriers to get the community involved and engaged in this? What were the barriers associated with doing community engagement? Uh, I'd say that our biggest barrier was you do want to, like I said, you do want to have uh, the movers and the shakers there, and they are the busiest people. So finding a way to engage them without having them get up and leave for a, another meeting because they've got three at the same time, same time, and um, finding the right time to meet and that kind of thing. I think that's a that's a barrier. How involved was the media with you all? Obviously, Judge, you you, you advertise through your fiber board, the paper. That's that's a very unique way of getting a, a board together. But how involved was, were the media with you all in, in this? They um, they came to a meeting or two, but they really didn't write a lot of stories or anything like that about it. They knew about it. Our our, our local papers uh, were different. Uh, they they done several stories on it, uh, and also we do have a local government uh, television station that all, that all of our court meeting shows on. So when I mentioned it in the court meeting, you know it went mm -hmm. throughout the county. So uh, that helped us. Uh, uh, the media out there uh, helped us. The, our, our government channel helped us, letting people know that what we were doing, and and how, you know why we, we could advertise when the meetings were. Uh, now, something I, else I think is very important. Don't just have a meeting, or, you know, the or, or county seat is Weisberg. Don't have you meet just in Weisberg. You have to go out to their communities. That's how you get them involved. Gail, that's true. What, well, what did you all do in regard to that in going out to other areas? Well, we went out to each county because, uh, well, our office is in Round County, and we knew, we, we kicked it off in Round County, not in our office, but um, we knew that in order to um, have engagement in every county, you had to go out. And the flavor of the meetings changed at each, you know, each meeting we went to, and we heard different things at each meeting. Um, Probably, um, I would, it seems like when you have a meeting that you, they always come up with, someone else should be there. And which caused us a few problems because then we would invite them and they would come. And it seemed like that um, you would have to rehash every time. So probably uh, a change I would make if I had to do it over. Anybody who, who was coming in new I would have them on an advisory board or an advisory group and not have them come back in fresh. I think I would just have them as an advisory group because rehashing frustrated the people who had already heard it and then you couldn't get as much done each time. So I think that that would be how we would handle that in the future if that happened again. I know you you experienced that as well. <laughs> yes. and. Darn if you do, darn if you don't, you know. Yeah. Um, I think one thing um, that I've noticed in working with clients um, is um, everybody had a different understanding of what broadband was mm -hmm. and how's the best way. And um, I love elected officials, Judge, but sometimes the elected officials had very diverse ideas about how to do broadband and they were convinced that their way was the best way. So in I, I was smart enough to get a real good board together because I knew I didn't know nothing about it. <laughs> But, but I know as a consultant, that was a real challenge for me to try to maneuver that, you know, that everybody's right, but we got a better answer <laughs> together, you know. So I know that was a challenge. But uh, it's just getting that common understanding of what it's about, what it can do for you, and what, what things you need to think about as you make the decision for your community. Uh, just going back, I, I'm the teacher, preacher, everything tech guy. 
Uh, I'm the chairman of the broadband board in, in Letcher County. Uh, would invite you, I, I just happen to be on our, our Facebook page right now, uh, going back to the education of, of, of uh, the constituents that we plan to serve. Uh, all of our, our constituents, uh, even though it takes 10 minutes uh, to get to Facebook uh, in the area that we're working on, uh, have, have a Facebook page, but we're worth driving to McDonald's to see it. Um, and another thing that we did, it's amazing what you can get people to share with you and, and, and align with you with a good pot of soup beans and sauerkraut and wieners. Well, sign me up. <laughs> In the constituents that you serve, was there a general level of dissatisfaction with the broadband in your area, or did you have to create that, or did you do both? And if you had to create it, how did you create it? Because that's probably the key, right, to getting this up. Well, I, we, we really didn't create it. It was already there that, that they wasn't satisfied with their service. Uh, and if they were satisfied with the service, uh, they were paying so high for their package that they weren't satisfied with it. Just, just, gen, just general public uh, being out in the public, uh, you know, I, I, I get a lot of phone calls every day. So, let me see if I can get this right. But now I like the soup bean, pinto beans, and cornbread. <laughs> Letcher County, how close was you to the Cumberland out there in Harlan County? Uh, just across the mountain from us. Roy Baker, Roy Baker here has got that cable operation, but you talk about creativity, Bill Risden. He had a local access, local access channel in his office with a stage, stage lights, studio room. I, I don't know how far back it goes. I know it goes back prior to the early 80s because I was over there. So that first cable system in Kentucky. And actually, Roy still got the original secretary. Right? Am I right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And then, Harry, do you have a follow-up? do you okay, consider your level social. of community awareness of all the different benefits of broadband can bring? You know, it's, we've heard it called a utility. We've heard it called an infrastructure. How aware do you think your community residents are about all that it can do in terms of public safety, of education, of telemedicine, those kinds of things? Uh, a, a lot of the general public is not aware of all that that they are aware of what they use it for. Uh, and, and that's where uh, that you have to educate them. And, and, and something that we've said on our board is, uh, and, and our chairman is real good about saying this, I may not say it just right, but to me, the, the broadband is like when the train tracks come through the United States. This is our future. This is what's going to make us. And, and with our economy, the way it's been, with no coal savers, no jobs, we have to diversify. And I think this is, couldn't be it as important as it was when the first train tracks come through the United States. I agree with the judge. I, I totally agree. Um, and as far as I think it depends on the user as to how educated they are with broadband. Uh, if they only do Facebook and they think it's too slow, then that's what their experience is and that's what they think. Uh, but I, there needs to be an education of what you can do with broadband out to the general public, just because I think that there's not enough education about it. I remember at AHA um, in a community setting that we were facilitating, and this lady jumped up and she says, you mean I don't have to take my grandmother to Lexington to the doctor anymore? You know. And you know they were they were just not aware of many of the benefits yeah. associated with, with telehealth, telemedicine. So I, I think informing the, your constituents, your residents, is a tremendous asset in community engagement. Yes. So I, I would just like to stress education and informing those folks about what it can do and how they can access it. Um, I just read the other day that some city was using cell phone for body cameras now for the police department. So it's all different ways of thinking about it. And I think, uh, Steve, your, your all's group was very heavy on Netflix as we started that process. <laughs> and so, um, as a joke, we added Netflix as a need for the broadband. But there's all many um, different levels of awareness in, you know, um, 
advocacy for different apps out there, applications. I just wanted to, and then I know we have three more questions, so I don't want to talk too long, but I do want to comment on, Judge, I believe you mentioned the grant application. I believe that was the Community Connect grant at RUS, and you haven't heard from that yet, right? So uh, we're really hopeful and prayerful about that. So this is just a point to those of you looking. Sometimes it may not fit exactly your whole community, might or might not fit Letcher County, but that grant is written. You could go out, for instance, Daryl did one in Phelps, a little community in Pike County when we first rolled that out. And it has an education component because you have to put in some public access computers. So you have people and you have to keep it open after certain hours. Like, so people who have to work that want to learn how to use it or telemedicine, Nancy, whatever, they have access and that builds your demand. But that is out there, uh, look to be funded again next year. It's highly competitive across the country. But it is one of the ways where you can begin to think about piecing together pieces of your community and what one part may not qualify another would but just one of those one to say and one to wish you the best on that and I'm trying to stay on top of them but I think who was that he was next and then see and then Leslie okay the, the question was is is how do we uh, put the dipstick in and find out the the what the community thought about the current service and all that uh, inside our Facebook page that I've advertised before uh, we actually put a online survey in there. Uh, it's through SurveyMonkey, doesn't cost you a thing, and it's a real good way to get a, a, a judgment or a meter of where you're at with, with community. Um, so that's very uh, advantageous. And also with SurveyMonkey, it also prints out your graphs so you're ready to produce those in grant forms. Survey is a, a very, um specialized way of getting one way, you know, you really can't open up the discussion, but it really is a good um, high impact um, type of engagement process. Uh, I want to comment too and, and truly emphasize the last thing I want this group to get started on because we, we hear enough about it on the news and we're dealing with it enough is Affordable Care Act or the, but, but let me tell you something, the telemedicine issue of this is like let me tell you something, that, that right there, that one issue alone, you talk about bringing health care costs down, that's tremendous in that, that particular respect. And, uh, uh, but anyway, I, and I'll finish up by saying, just because I got the mic, I, I've got to run off to Pikeville and I'm already late. Late's my middle name. So anyway, because i got to be there by 6 o'clock. But anyhow, it's been a pleasure <laughs> being with you all today. But I, I didn't want to leave the room without emphasizing. The reason I, I say that is over in Pikeville, with you, Pike, where, you know, I, in the middle 90s, I was there, I was CFO, and we started, the, uh, uh, we started the osteopathic school, and we did it based on the concept of being the first to do telemedicine. Yep. And that, that right there alone, in, particularly in our rural areas, and trying to deal with health care costs, this issue of broadband and bringing that about is, is just unbelievable where something like that's concerned. Thank you. Have great we really haven't touched on the many benefits of economic development and jobs and that kind of thing, but that's a discussion for another day. It really has a tremendous impact, a beneficial impact on those, those areas. Well, I've got another question, but I do have a comment to make um, just before. Um, I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of having a, a local uh, broadband board or at least, a, at the very least, a, a contact within your community. If you don't have one, one takeaway for you today is to go back and, and form one or find somebody. Because as we have grant fund um, opportunities come up, I need to know who to call. Um, so we don't want you uh, being bypassed with uh, information which could be very impactful into your community. And, you know, as these guys found out, I'd just love to come over and, and participate on those boards at, at any time, provide whatever input and knowledge that I've got available. And I'll hand it over to you. And, and Larry, I think just to uh, reiterate that, I think you've heard the common theme of leadership throughout this day. So I don't think we can not comment on that enough to have, you know, it, it takes a leadership, not just one person, that's where you start, but it really takes a community-wide leadership um, to meet the, better meet the needs of the community. Nancy, as you know, um, when we did our strategic plan with Slarity Group in London, 
And uh, just a plug for y'all, we still are reaping benefits from doing that. One of the early strategic decisions we made was to not include uh, uh, the incumbents in that early conversation. I, and I think that was a wise decision, but I feel like we're at a point now where we're, we really need to approach them. And it sounds like in Letcher County, y'all have already had some conversations with the, with the existing providers. And I'm just curious, any advice, lessons learned from those conversations and how, how would you recommend somebody else approach that subject with them? I think before you approach them, you need to know what your, what your plan is have your plan in place and, and just lay it out front. Uh, you know, uh, I think that's the biggest thing you can do. Uh, this is what, you know, we're looking at doing. This is what we're gonna do. Uh, you know, you either come along or you don't. And that's kind of the way we put it. You, I know you had some conversations with your incumbents. You had any comments yeah. received on that? Uh, we basically said the same thing uh, and we're gonna continue to meet with them and let them know, um, you know, what our plans are. And, yeah. But, but I would like to reiterate that, that I think through local governments uh, that if you look at, at, right, at buying the, the broadband width, that being a government entity, we can buy it cheaper. And I think the private companies need to look at us doing that for them so that they can lower their rates. We're not necessarily in it for the money, we're in it for the, the, their customers, uh, our citizens. I think it's real important though that we do know what they're planning on doing themselves and make sure that we incorporate that in. We see. Yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention is as you gain input from your community, you just don't write it down and put it on the shelf. You need to actively consider it may not agree with it, but you need to have the community feel assured that their, their input is being looked at and considered as those decisions are made. So um, I just want to make a comment on that because uh, if, if I give you input and you throw it away, what you know, it leaves a really bad taste in, in people's mouth. Are we about no questions or? or? I, I would like to have one more. That that you know, as as our board goes forth, and, and I think most boards need to be this. We're we're not to put anybody out of business. We we want to expand and help. And if anybody wants a copy of our plan, you can leave a copy of your business card with me, and I'll be glad to share it. Okay, we ready to wrap up over there? Thank you for your attention. I know we were the last ones on the, on the agenda.